There's been an announcement by the NASA Curiosity rover team that they've found some peculiarities in the atmospheric oxygen around Gale Crater. Now this could potentially indicate signs of microbial life on Mars, which is of course exciting. But it's just one of many indications people have had of life on Mars throughout human history. So let's go through history and explore each of the times people have thought there have been life on Mars and see how this new detection stacks up. To do this, we'll wind all the way back to the 1800s when the first detailed observations of the Martian surface took place. During an opposition of Mars to the Earth, so the closest approach between the two bodies, an astronomer called Giovanni Cappelli observed the Martian surface in great detail, and he sketched a map, which you can see here, of what he saw on the Martian surface. And he described there to be structures of canali on the Martian surface. Now, canali could mean one of many different things. It could mean a gully, a ravine, a canal, or any kind of crevasse type structure but it was taken in an English translation to literally mean canals, canals on the surface of Mars. During the next opposition in 1889, Charles Young announced the discovery of new canals on the Martian surface. Now this was back in a time in astronomy where astronomers would use their own eyes to look through the telescopes and wait for a momentary clear patch of seeing and sketch down what they saw from memory. So there could be some issues with transcribing the observation. Nevertheless, people got excited by this. How could new features suddenly appear on the surface of Mars in the space of a couple of years? It didn't seem like there could be a geological process that could lead to this. Then in 1892, W.H. Pickering claimed that he found dark spots on the Martian surface, kind of dotted between the intersections of multiple canals. Now this could perhaps mean any number of things, perhaps there's some weird geological features like mountains that have ravines coming off them. But another conclusion that you could come to is what if those dark spots were cities and those cities were connected to each other by these canals? Well, that's certainly a very fascinating prospect and one that excited a number of people. One person who was particularly excited by this story was Percival Lowell, who in 1894 claimed that Mars is host to perhaps a dying civilization. So he'd made detailed maps from his telescopes of what he perceived the surface of Mars to be. In this map here, you can see the crisscrossings of all of the Martian canals that he observed and dotted between with the cities. Now the idea that was put forward was that Mars was known at the time to have a very sparse atmosphere and not much water on the surface, but they did know it had polar ice caps. So the idea was that this dying civilization had a massive engineering project where they were taking water from the polar ice caps and transporting them all the way down to the equatorial cities on Mars. Now this idea gained a lot of favor and was absolutely fantastical. Imagine that, civilizations on Mars. But other astronomers couldn't see the same things that Lowell was finding. And in 1909, after much debate, this idea of canals and cities on Mars fell out of favor and we were left with the uninhabited Mars that we know today. And greater studies of the atmosphere showed again that it was kind of barren. Mars was not at all like Earth, at least now. So there was no hope of Earth-like life, complex life, surviving on this modern Mars. So there's no complex life on Mars. We're pretty certain of that. But what about microbial life? Could there be microbes living on the surface of Mars? Perhaps Mars used to be more Earth-like, more habitable in the past. And there's some life that evolved during that habitable phase, which has clung on to existence right to the present day. Well, that tantalizing idea has prompted many missions to Mars to try and understand the Martian environment 
and seek answers to that very question. Could there be life on Mars? Now, if we fast forward some many years, we reach the first mission to go to Mars to analyze the Martian surface, to try and search for life on Mars. This is the Viking missions in 1974. They landed on the Martian surface, they imaged it, and they had a suite of experiments which they performed to try and detect evidence of organic molecules or even life on the surface of Mars. Of the four experiments that the Vikings had on them to test if there were life on Mars, one of them was the gas chromatograph mass spectrometer. Now this experiment heated Martian soil and used a mass spectrometer to measure the molecules that were present in the Martian soil. And to their surprise, they found that Mars was incredibly devoid of organic compounds. Now these are long molecules made up of carbon chains, so carbon atoms strung together in long molecules. In fact, it had less of these than what the moon had, which was very perplexing. But perhaps it could be explained by the presence of lots of iron on Mars' surface and the high ultraviolet radiation the surface experienced. The only organic molecules that they found with the Vikings were chloromethane and dichloromethane. Both of these molecules are not compatible with Earth life, at least. Another experiment that was conducted was the gas exchange, where they took a soil sample from Mars, pumped out all of the Martian atmosphere, replaced it with an inert helium atmosphere, and then they provided nutrients to this sample in the form of oxygen and some water and other organic molecules. Now the purpose of this was to see if the oxygen would be taken up and replaced with something else like carbon dioxide, which on Earth would indicate biological processes. While it seems that the results of this experiment might have shown some indications of life, the oxygen disappeared and carbon dioxide emerged. Both of the Vikings found this same result, which was very interesting and very tantalizing again. But after repeating the experiment about a week later, they found no result. So the first time they conducted the experiment, they had carbon dioxide being produced. The second time, they had nothing. Now, if you were to do this experiment, with Earth soil, the second time you conduct the experiment, you should expect to see more carbon dioxide being produced. Because after the first round, you make more bacteria and they'll consume more nutrients in the second round. So this seemed like it cast doubt on the nature of the reaction being biological. So perhaps it was some reaction happening with the chemistry of the Martian soil itself. So this test was ruled to be inconclusive. And if we fast forward to 2008, we get to the Phoenix lander, which lands on Mars and conducts experiments similar to those that the Vikings conducted, but in much more detail. And one thing that they found in the Martian soil was something called a perchlorate. And these perchlorates are very oxidizing to organic molecules if exposed to ultraviolet light or heat. And this doesn't bode well for complex organic molecules on the surface of Mars, which is subject to lots of ultraviolet radiation. For the ultraviolet radiation would activate the perchlorate, which would then go about destroying the organic molecules. Similar, if you wind back the clock to the Viking experiments, where they heated up the soil, that would have activated the perchlorates, and that would have destroyed any organic molecules present. But the byproducts of these perchlorates activating on organic molecules are something that we heard a little bit earlier in the video. They're things like chloromethane and dichloromethane, which are the two prominent organic molecules that the Vikings found on the surface of Mars. So perhaps there were more complex organic molecules in the soil that the Vikings scooped up, but through heating of the perchlorates, they destroyed those organic molecules. And some argue that this is evidence that we shouldn't discount the lack of organic molecules on the surface of Mars from the Viking mission. Because if they were there, they simply would have been destroyed. So perhaps it is still within the realm of possibility that there could be complex organic molecules on the surface of Mars 
and maybe even microbial life somewhere on Mars. With all that said, the observations from the Viking landers and from the Phoenix lander still are inconclusive. There's no hard evidence that there's either no life on Mars or life on Mars. So now we can fast forward to more recent times again in 2012. The Curiosity rover, a rover the size of a car, landed on Mars and started exploring a region of Mars called Gale Crater. And in this crater, it started analyzing the soil and the atmosphere of Mars. And it's been doing so for about seven years now. So it's been taking these observations for quite some time. And Curiosity has found lots of evidence to suggest that Mars was once more Earth-like than it is today, which is of course absolutely fascinating. But some other observations that Curiosity has taken of Mars's atmosphere have shown some very peculiar things indeed. The first peculiarity that Curiosity found in the Martian atmosphere in the Gale Crater region was that there was methane present in the atmosphere. Not only that, but the methane changed with the Martian seasons. It was low during the winter and increased towards the summer and then repeated that cycle throughout the Martian seasons. Now this is peculiar because methane is what we consider to be a biomarker. It's readily destroyed by ultraviolet light from the sun, so it's quite volatile, so you need a constant production of it. On Earth, the constant production is usually from organic things, microbes and people like us and other animals all over the Earth. But on Mars, is that the case as well? Well, the fact that it modulates with the seasons perhaps suggests that there might be something happening, but it might not necessarily be life. So there are two hypotheses here shown in this image. On one hand, during summer, you could make water more readily available beneath the surface of Mars, and this could fuel biological processes through microbes which produce methane, which will eventually make their way up to the surface. Or you could have rocks like olivine, which react with the water and produce reactions that eventually produce methane as well. Both of these sources could be the explanation for what we see with Curiosity, that the methane on Mars modulates with the season. But there are also weird spikes in the concentration of methane in Mars' atmosphere, which are yet to be explained. I'm not sure if biology or geology would provide an easier explanation for either of these processes. Now there is a chemical difference in the isotopes of what you would expect to come from biology and what you would expect to come from geology, but unfortunately Curiosity isn't equipped to make those distinctions. So at the moment we only know that the methane concentration changes. Now, the most recent announcement from Curiosity is that in the atmosphere of the Gale Crater region, the oxygen concentration also changes with seasons. Now this was expected to happen, and they had a good model to predict what would happen to the oxygen. You can see it here, there's the model, but there are clear outliers. In the spring leading up to summer, there is more oxygen present in the atmosphere of the Gale Crater region. And going into winter, there's suddenly a lot less. Oxygen is also a biomarker. It's readily destroyed, so you need a constant source producing the oxygen to account for it. And this is what the model predicts. But those deviations are not accounted for. You need more something to produce more oxygen, and you need more something else to take away the oxygen. And what's more, if you overlap it with the methane variation, the two match up reasonably well. So we have two biomarkers on Mars, methane and oxygen, both seemingly varying with the seasons and in step with each other. So could this mean that there is microbial life somewhere on Mars? Well, it seems like there could be a good bet and we need more instruments on the Martian surface that are actually capable of making these observations. And these missions are kind of in the works with the Mars 2020 rover and other planned missions. But it is incredibly exciting that we have more evidence that there could be life on the surface of Mars. And we've moved away from 
the early days in the 1800s of there being cities, advanced civilizations on the surface of Mars. But we're moving towards perhaps an answer that there is life on Mars. Microbial life that might have a different origin to the life on Earth. And even if it has the same origin as the life on Earth, that is also equally fascinating. But having a distinct population of life somewhere else in the universe, apart from the Earth, that is absolutely amazing to be perhaps within our grasp. So I'm looking forward to any more results that come from Curiosity or any of the other Martian missions because they might actually give us an answer or a partial answer to the question, are we alone in the universe? Is life just on Earth or is it everywhere in space? I hope for the latter. <laughs>